Okay, we're here. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Pastor VTJ Masagona, all the way from Calvary Christian Church, Pretoria East. Apparently, I've been ambushed to come here and tell you a bit about how our six years have gone by. It's been six years, man. It's unbelievable. It's such a great and exciting experience as well. And God has been so good in the last six years. So I'm going to take you down a journey of how the six years have been. And it's been quite an interesting one. A blessed one indeed. Welcome. If you're sitting on your couch, grab a cup of coffee, grab something to drink, and let's take this journey together this evening, this afternoon, this morning, whatever time it is in your world. Get them to us and welcome to the docu series six. Well, the question that's been asked is when did uh, Triple CPE start? So you know 2018 was quite an interesting year and it was on the 3rd of march 2018 and maybe let me not even you know go down that path yet but on the 2nd of march 2018 i remember you know you'll see a shot of that shortly of myself sitting in a room and there was nobody in that room uh and i just thought to myself tomorrow i'm hoping that people are gonna come you know the 2nd of march was that day um and sitting there i just sat in a position of faith trusting and believing that somehow one way or the other somebody's going to come and celebrate with us the launch of this vision that god had laid in our hearts i spoke to my wife about it spoke to my family about it and i said this is what god is calling us to do and he literally said to me that you know do it in the east and that's what i've called you to do so the 3rd of march came on a saturday morning and you know there were flyers pamphlets social media and all of that stuff all preps have been done and the 3rd of march was officially the first service and i remember my dad was there he had a bit of a strong chat with me and he said man now you're jumping into the pool and you have to start swimming and you're not going to be swimming on your own you're going to you're going to be swimming with god right in there and the 3rd of march was the official launch date and the first sunday of uh, cover christian church in pretoria east the 4th of march on that sunday morning i remember waking up very early in the morning just to pray and uh, man and just to seek the face of god and understand man is this it and i remember you know the the previous um yeah the previous day on 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 the saturday when we were launching the church my dad said to me church starts tomorrow and i'm not going to be preaching you are going to be preaching this is you and when i'm done here i'm leaving i'm going back to limpopo and i'm going to do what i need to do um and on sunday morning i asked my wife i said are we really doing this you know <laughs> we come into church for the first time and we came man and thank god i could play keyboard and thank god my wife could sing and this is how triple cpe started um and it's been a journey um and i mean it's been a great one um and on that day i played keyboards after playing keyboards uh or keyboard rather i then came and stood up and started preaching um and in that season or in that year we were actually dealing with the grace we we're teaching on the grace as a church and i had to start off on that and that's how triple cpe started and yeah man give me a shout out if you were there on the first on the first day um, and you were with us there on the first day why triple cpe um you know what god really laid it in our hearts that we should start a church that he will definitely be the lead of he will be the order of but most importantly you know one of the things he laid in our hearts was that we should start a church that will be a point of reference of excellence and greatness you know within our community and where we come from i'll share a bit of that in terms of the fact that we come from you know guamondo venda in far north in limpopo and where we come from we come to the city and you know church is done in a different way where we come from and god just laid in our hearts to say man i want you to do something that will give honor and glory to my name all around one of the things that was so 
daunting in that was also realizing how young we were at the time both me and my wife we were 30 years old um, and if I was to say quite honestly one of the greatest courages I got was that Jesus started his ministry when he was 30 as well so I felt like man <laughs> the same thing that happened to Jesus can you do it with us as well and lastly why triple CPE our aim and our heart's desire has always been to impact a multi-generation of people you know from the young to the old to the oldest in the room we are so focused on building a church that every single person can be part of it doesn't matter their ethnicity it doesn't matter where they come from it doesn't matter their color we want to be able to have that kind of a church where everybody can feel at home just like our logo says you know our, our statement says a church you can call home and that's literally why triple cpe and uh yeah, and the name Triple CPE, you know, most of the people thought we we are in Port Elizabeth. <laughs> but it was just to shorten up uh, the Pretoria East conversation as well. So, yeah, that's what we are, and that's who we are. How has the journey been? Ah, oh, man, I don't know where to start. I mean, I've told you about where we started, um, and when we started, uh, I remember before Triple CPE started as a church, on the 3rd of March, we were sitting in a room with about eight other people that form our task team in the church as well, currently to this date. Um, and it was just nine of us, including, including myself. And I said, this is the, the vision that God has laid in my heart. Um, and this is it. And I remember we would meet up for prayer every single, every single day leading towards the launch or leading towards the first day of the church. And we collected an offering, guys. This was interesting. We collected an offering for the start of the church. And we said to everybody, pray about it. See what the Lord, you know, leads you to lay into this, into this vision. And when we collected that offering, I think it was about 4,200 rand. You know, um, our rent at the time was going to be about 32,000 rand. Um, and I had a chat with my wife and I said, man, if this is going to require us to, to take money from our own pockets, we're going to do that. And on the first Sunday, we had so many visitors. We were about 222. Um, the next Sunday is when Real Church started because we were about 40, you know, from 222 uh, to 40. Um, the journey has been quite a daunting one. Um, and I can say first and foremost how the journey has been. It has been quite a faith journey. A faith journey. Let me talk about the first six months of the church. We are there. We're enjoying church. We don't have sound. We keep on hiring sound every Sunday. We're gathering there, you know. And one of the first things that was so critical, so daunting was when God laid in our hearts that I want you to launch Vision 2021. And I said, God, what's that? He said, Vision 2021 is you guys are going to have your own building or your own piece of land in 2021. And I said, Lord, but there's only about 70 of us. What's, how is that going to work? And you know what? <laughs> strictly as well when you start building projects you lose people and people don't want to be part of it and it was such a daunting task and i remember god led me into a place of of preaching a series the vision series for about 11 weeks or so and he says on the 11th week i want you to launch this thing and tell people that you know so the journey has been quite a very 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 faithful journey uh we've had to move buildings we went through COVID. in COVID, it was trying it was testing we had to find ourselves only meeting online we couldn't go to church for about seven months um apart from the journey just being a faith journey it's been also miraculous in its form we've seen you know our vision 2021 target met a year earlier than what was anticipated now we are in the process of trying to build the church you know build the actual building as we sit where we are at right now so i'm shortening the journey to just a few words uh, but it's been quite a great journey um, a few lessons on the way that we have learned some of the things is just to realize that one of the greatest things we have to remember is that people belong to god and you have to treat them and preach and teach and pastor them like they belong to god and that's been you know a short a short part of the journey um, and i know you know as we trying to really compress this into just this short docu documentary um, we can't say everything 
but it's been quite a great 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 and an awesome journey trying testing and such an awesome one that we've had even in this particular point in time hi everyone my name is Taro Ganyam Rauzi. um i joined calvary in 2019 my experience has been great so far it's a great church great community loving people and amazing uh, sermons um, joining Calvary Christian Church has been the best uh, experience for my life. The most important thing that I enjoy in this church is the worship. I love worship, worship, worship and the word. My experience in Calvary has been like an excellent year. I've been here for since 2018, uh, I think March the 10th. And throughout Calvary has really inspired me to be a better person and a better Christian. Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Nangwame, I even got married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did it take to take this step? Sure. Man, <laughs> I've already spoken about the journey being a faith journey, but what it literally took to take this step, it took God. I can tell you right now, it really, really honestly took God. Let me share maybe a bit of why I say it really took God. About a couple of years earlier, you know, thank god for for the raising of 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 myself um and my wife as well from pastoral homes as well but when when i came to pretoria i came and i landed in the hands of pastor hilda Mabai, who is the pastor of um, restoration christian church international uh in pretoria west uh, and she's the first person that said to me man i want you to preach i said man what are you talking about <laughs> and she said i want you to preach um, and I remember preaching in my first all-night prayer meeting. Um, and that's when this gift and what God has laid in my heart started to blossom there. Um, and why I say it took God for us to start Triple CPE is because at that time when it happened, it came to a point where, you know, I had so many people around me saying, man, when are you starting a church? When are you doing this? When are you doing that? I said, God has said nothing until God visited me. And he said, man, it's now time. And it literally, literally took God in that instance. And God said, let's do it. And I can tell you right now, there are specific instructions he gave us in terms of how to do church. Till today, we are still following through with those instructions as well. And when he said, let's start, we started. You know, we started. But I want to say ultimately as well, or additionally as well, is it also took courage. It was such a daunting task. Um, it's not easy to plant. It's not easy to start, but it was such a daunting task. I did not know how it was going to work in terms of where we're going to get the people to come through or how. I did not know all of that. I just trusted God and we just said, let's, let's get into the water and we're going to start swimming. And that's, that's, that's what it really took. And part of it, which is a very personal story, is I never wanted to become a pastor, uh, to be quite honest. I think I've seen enough in my life. Um, and I always joke around with people and I say my, my greatest desire was to become a pilot and fly away from the church. And that was actually literally the plan, guys. <laughs> it was literally the plan. Uh, but it took so much courage uh, to come down and say, Lord, this is what's going to happen and this is what we're going to do. Um, we did not know where the money is going to come from in terms of sustaining the church. We did not know how things are going to go in terms of keeping everything together. But we're here now and six years on, God has been good. He's really, really been good. Some challenges and how to overcome them. Yo, man, challenges have been a lot, um, to be quite honest. Challenges have been a lot. Um, you find yourself in a position at times. I remember one of our biggest challenges is when in our first venue, we, we were you know, served with an eviction notice that we need to leave the venue. Um, and if you have been a church planter, especially in the city as well, you know every time you approach a building and you want to rent and you literally tell them, I want to do church, half the time, if not 90% of the time, the doors are shut on you. And it was such a panicking moment. Um, this has happened twice to us, by the way, where we've had to move buildings. Um, and every single one of them, you realize the, the words of John Maxwell who says, it all rises and falls on leadership. And I saw that, man. Um, I'd have sleepless nights trying to think where we're going to go to church, you know. And I'd come to church on a Sunday morning, and it's probably our second last or our third last Sunday. 
in the building and people are wondering when are we moving where are we moving to and i don't even have an answer you know so that has been quite quite a big challenge how to overcome it honestly i i i will tell you no lies and just tell you trusting god literally and really really working the ground in terms of finding the places that would suit you know the the church uh, in terms of finding the venues that would suit the church and doing the work on the ground i remember i'd leave the office uh, and and spend half of the day going from one viewing to the next, trying to find what would work. And then I'd call on our leadership once I found something that would work. And I say, guys, look at this. Will this work? And there was one instance, hey guys, <laughs> where when we went to see this place, every one of our leaders was negative about it. They're just like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not. And I remember I was so disappointed and discouraged, uh, where I even said, man, guys. If you are saying this is not going to work, please find something else that's going to work. You can't tell me it's not going to work and you don't have solutions, you know. Uh, but God has been good. I think the second challenge as well has also been to really build stability within the church. That's been quite an interesting challenge, you know, um, to find stability within the church. How do we remain stable within and without season, in every season? And that, that's been quite a challenging thing. Prayerfully so, this is how to overcome it, you know, um, and really spend time hearing from God on what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done. Before we even started with the church, the Lord taught me something strongly and he said to me, look, the vision that I've given you needs to be done within a certain season because that's when everything you need is available. If you miss the season, you will miss what I've called you to do. And that's, and that's really honestly been one of those things that's, that's so interesting and so intriguing um, as well. The last and third challenge that I want to raise up is when, <laughs> when you need to, make, to take the next step to the next level. Man, you know, especially, and I spoke about the building project earlier, especially when we had to launch it. Oh, I just, it was a challenge, you know, to speak a faith word when you can see that circumstances might not even allow. Now we are in the building phase and we had to relaunch the building phase again after COVID. It was tricky, you know, like, will people sit back and think that you're being insensitive? Will they feel like you don't, you don't, you don't think about them? All of that stuff was just, it was just tricky, you know. Um, but God just gives you this heart and this courage to be able to stand. And and let me take the moment to really thank also everybody that's been part of the journey. People that joined us in between, people that have, you know, they were there to start with us and they've they've made this six years possible. Uh, it's It would never have been, you know, what it is without you allowing yourself to be used by God to be part of this. And that's been really, really such an awesome and a great blessing it's not been us only it's been so many people that have really really made this work um and made this church what it is today and we look forward to greater heights as well so yeah those those are the few challenges i can literally honestly share uh with you guys in the limited time that i've been uh given this this uh, today you know uh, just to share with you guys what is your highest highlight in six years sure there have been many hey to be quite honest, there have been so, so, so many. Um, I think our biggest highlight, honestly speaking, is to find ourselves in a position where in the six years we, we have managed to buy a piece of land um, for the building of his temple, for the building of God's church. Uh, I remember when I was talking to certain people about this um, and they said to me, you know, before we even launched it and before we even started with Vision 2023 and 2021 as well, they said to me, man, um, the thing that you are saying never happens in six years. You can't, you're in three years, well, not even six years. You can't, you can't make it happen. Um, churches don't work like that, you know. And number two, we're even told by certain, you know, people around us that you want to start a church in the East, you can forget about it. You're not going to succeed there. The East is, a, is for a certain type of people. It's not for you guys. You are too rural and all of that stuff. But here is God. Uh, you know, the story behind the land and the purchasing of, of that land is amazing. It happened during the time of our eviction, you know, um, and we're being evicted uh, by the landlord. And the Lord, landlord said to us, look, if you guys have been good people, 
um we just unfortunately have to bring our relationship to an end so you got two months to find a place to have church at um and i'm like okay i came and i told the church told our leaders i could hear everybody was worried and scared um and funny enough that happened just before COVID. So we are busy hunting and we found a place and the Lord said, no, 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 don't sign up that lease. We're like, but Lord, we need a place. And he says, don't sign up that lease. As soon as he said, don't sign up that lease, a week later, lockdown is announced. When lockdown was announced, we found ourselves in a place where we didn't owe anybody rent. We didn't have a lease that was existing. We had to move. Everything just, you know, was rendering us, for lack of a better word, debt free if you want to put it like that we did not owe anybody anything except love as the scripture says um and that seven months allowed us to save you know enough money to be able to go and purchase the land cash um without actually having to worry about anything else so i think that's really really honestly been the biggest highlight um in this in the six years and just doing church with my family as well has been such a great 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 blessing uh, my wife, uh, as she is Reverend MC, is such a blessing. My kids as well, my siblings as well that are around me. You know, the church at large, our leadership, team leaders. Oh, man, we've had such a bunch of people, or we have such a bunch of people in this church that just honestly, honestly love God and love serving Him. And this is what makes, uh, you know, uh, church work for us as well. Just thought... I want to sneak that one in as well so that uh, I can just give them a shout out as well. And I love every single one of them as well, you know. So, yeah. And that's probably why I remember most of the names of everybody in the church. Hi, my name is Folo. And I'm very grateful to be part of this church. Uh, in the past five years, I've grown a lot spiritually, emotionally. And the sisterhood in this church is such a vibe. Like, I've met a lot of good people that I love, that have supported me. And I'm also learning to also be there for my other sisters. My prayer life has moved from down there to up there. Um, the church has really played a huge role in impacting and strengthening my prayer life. Um, we have prayer every single Monday and we also have prayer and fasting from Wednesdays until Saturdays. So that has really strengthened me, um, endurance wise and also building a relationship with God and I'm grateful for it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tuso and one thing that I love about this church is how it pays attention to mindfulness and mental health. It takes care of the total man and I love this church. My best sermon in six years. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, guys. <laughs> I I tried to sit back and I thought to myself, how many sermons have I preached in this church? I I, I lost count, um, honestly speaking. But if there's one sermon that really comes out to mind is a sermon entitled uh god wastes no seasons i think that was the title of that sermon we're doing a, a series uh on seasons um it was two years ago i think beginning of the year two years ago man i enjoyed preaching that um honestly speaking i really really enjoyed preaching that no waste just the fact that god does not waste seasons um yeah i've got quite an, a list guys so i'm not gonna go through everything but there's one sermon that we preached as well i think it was in 2019 um yeah i think it was 2019 if i'm not mistaken uh, that was entitled uh painful but necessary painful but necessary um it was such yeah such a jump and just talking about how things happen in our lives that are painful but when they are done happening we realize the necessity of those things so yeah I, i'm not gonna talk about all the sermons no i'm not gonna do that this time around when i say i'm i'm finishing i'm finished i'm not gonna add anything else so yeah that's been <laughs> you know one or two sermons that have been such a highlight um in in the six years as well where to from now oh man we look forward to honestly becoming the church you can literally honestly and fully call home um, one of the greatest targets we have that we're working on currently is making sure that we build this awesome church that you're seeing displayed shortly. Um, you know, that's what we want to be able to build. 
and we want to be able to see that happening for the glory of God. You know, two things that God told us is that number one, I'll make you a point of reference. I'll make you a learning space. I'll make you a place where people wonder how can this be? And we are holding on to that promise. The second thing is I will make you a church that you can call home. Everything that you say you are, I will make you. And we are looking forward to that. We're really looking forward to a 2024 filled with so much joy, laughter, the manifestation of God's presence, the manifestation of God's miraculous power as well. And uh, to the next six years, we're looking forward to just really becoming that church that is qualitative, not just quantitative. But growth is not just about the numbers, but growth is more even about the change in the, you know, and the impact that is happening in people's lives. So yeah, that's what we're looking forward to, you know, um, in the short space of time that we are looking ahead and we look forward to really God being so good to us and being so awesome to us. And yeah, man, I have, yeah, they're telling me I have to close at some point, but I'm going to close shortly, you know. Um, it's really honestly been a journey um, that God has been so good to us. Um, he's been such a great God. He's been such an awesome God. He's been a God that's been present, audible, tangible, and everything. And I want to say to everybody that's part of Calvary Christian Church in Pretoria East, and even people that are no longer part of us, but they've really contributed to making this vision what it is, I want to take this time and send my heartfelt gratitude. Um, I can honestly say it's such a joy to pastor this church. It is such a joy. You're pastoring people that love you. You're pastoring people that appreciate you. You're pastoring people that are excited about, you know, church and they enjoy it. Every single team, every single volunteer, every single person that makes this church work and that makes this church what it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to take also the time to really appreciate my mom and my dad, who are both my spiritual leaders and also my you know my biological uh, parents as well thank you so much for for really raising us up to be what we are today and for supporting us you know in the way that you have supported us all the way from cover christian church international which is our headquarters in in Ramondo, in venda thank you um so much for the love that you have shown and the greatness that you have really instilled in us watering us all the fathers um, all the leaders, every single person that has really made this happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and the love that we have for you is unmatched. We are really, really grateful. I'm truly, truly grateful for the love that you have shown to us. And I trust and believe that, you know, as the years go by, we will become everything that God has told us to become. And I want to leave you with this word lastly. And God laid in my heart this year and he said, no seed that you have put on the ground will not grow. It will germinate. And I want to believe that everything that we have planted and we have worked so hard to build in this church will definitely, definitely germinate and it will, it will come together. Um, and I know some of the people that were part of this, uh, you know, they really did such an awesome job of bringing us together into this moment and into this time. And we look forward to the next six years as well. And as they famously say, when I'm preaching, um, I'm about to finish. And yeah, <laughs> I've just finished, guys. 